good good morning uh, i just uh, we want to give you an overview in a short time uh, to why you should uh, diagnose charco foot early uh, this is a definition of charco foot uh, which was uh, given by original jamari charco it has not changed over the century and this is a picture of jamari charco in his clinic and this is what he had said about charco and what i showed you earlier this his elaborate definition has everything but this was not basically meant for diabetes it was for a tabis dorsalis but with the same pathology now the incidence of charco in india changes from where you are getting data but an average there are about 7.5 is the highest what you see of all diabetes patient when we think of a millions of patient like 70 million it's a large number what is the current status of our knowledge about charco uh, is still in a infancy we don't really don't know why charco occurs there are th there is a neuro uh, traumatic theory there is a traumatic theory there is now a new genetic theory there is a enzymatic theory but many times you have a patient of a same uh, you know uh, data like patients have same duration of diabetes same blood sugar control while one patient gets a charco and heals beautifully conservatively other patient in spite of everything just goes on destroying his joint now why does that happen really nobody knows there's a lot of furious research going on that so uh, at present though knowledge is not very complete about its pathophysiology and pathogenesis the treatments are evolving very rapidly to stabilize the joint but unfortunately india the current status is that a number of higher level amputation done for incorrectly diagnosed or uh, incorrectly uh, identified charco foot is very high because in india at a ground level uh, usually unilateral swelling of a foot is always treated as a filariasis and so many patients of diabetes who have got unilateral swelling are getting for months together uh, heterazan and they ultimately land up with a problem and early diagnosis needs only simple clinical examination and a simple plain x rays you don't really need uh, for a prevention and early diagnosis any sophisticated scans basically few anatomical points see basically it's a majority of the charco uh, problems are in the forefoot or midfoot hind foot charco is comparatively less and that is where these alignments of the joints is very important and the lisfranc's ligament which holds second cuneiform second metatarsal is a very strong ligament and somehow that gets affected first because of this you know sudden burst of osteoclastic activity which is triggered either by uh, trauma or by sudden perfusion of the foot and uh, that starts destroying so the foot starts getting destabilized and this is of course these are the interosseous ligaments connecting from second to fifth metatarsal which then subsequently get damaged when you see a foot uh, you must remember second and third is a uh, unit which is a very strong unit while first and fifth is a mobile which helps in uh, our mobility unfortunately in a charco second and third is something which gets affected so the foot which is supposed to be stable becomes very mobile suddenly and that is how it starts getting destroyed how do you assess biomechanics i think if all of us just take uh, x ray simple x ray ap lateral uh, of a patient who has a unilateral edema of the feet and uh, take this measure these angles i think you can diagnose uh, the charco at its evolves at this stage early stage and these are you know talocalcaneal angle talus first metatarsal angle calcaneal inclination all this can be measured by a good digital x ray similarly in a other view also so this is very important this does not require even a doctor if you teach a paramedic the paramedic can measure these angles now you must understand why why the foot gets deformed in diabetes see foot as i said yesterday is a very energy efficient machine normal person doesn't get 
cons, calluses or any deformities except at an elderly age when the muscles are weak. Uh, so this happens in diabetes because of a metabolic problem. And if you just take a simple x-ray once a year, as I said, AP x-ray, and you will notice that there is a gap between first and second cuneiform, which is normally, anatomically, there is no gap. And if you just draw these lines here, first, second metatarsal, and which transact this cuboid navicular line, this angle C in uh, podiatry is known as angle of adductus primus, which is normally five degrees. And if you see this increasing, that's the earliest sign that this foot is likely to collapse unless you install some preventive strategies. This is, these are another angles which you can easily measure. And as I said, this is the strongest joint. Whatever may be the etiology we are thinking, it starts getting damaged and it starts shifting laterally. And this is a normal, what is known as a load triangle of a fo uh, foot in uh, biomechanics. And the normal weight bearing is along the second metatarsal, second toe. In the presence of advancing neuropathy uh, with a uncontrolled blood sugar and if the patient is walking with an incorrect or no footwear, the weight bearing slowly shifts to the midfoot. And this patient keeps on walking on that. Along with there is a contracture of tendo achilles because of a non-enzymatic glycation. So foot goes into equinus and then it will break down and form a charco foot. So a simple preventive measure of like, you know, most of the physicians uh, do annually microalbumin, ophthalmic examination, cardiac examination, then cardiac examination for autonomic neuropathy, whether there is a hypostatic hypotension. You can just take an X-ray and measure this. And if you find this angle is changing, just clinically examine what is the condition of the foot and just give a patient good footwear with a medial arch support. So the medial column is supported and see whether the tendo Achilles is tight. These are all can be done clinically and then you can easily at least prevent this uh, medial midfoot collapse. Otherwise you get feet like this, which are of course correctable, but it involves a lot of technology and cost. So repetitive moderate force of day-to-day -day routine walking can damage the foot in the presence of advancing neuropathy. That must be clearly understood and it's not a, patient, it's not a trauma. Actually, uh, you, we need to understand that uh, neuropathic foot is always hyperperfused because of a uh, shunts which are open because of autonomic neuropathy. So you, even if you do a ingrowing toenail surgery, it's a trauma. And if we allow the patient to walk, you will find many of these patients go into charco slowly because a trauma will increase the perfusion and that triggers the osteoclastic activity. We really don't know what is a biochemical pathway for that. I'll just show you a few things. But that triggers the osteoclastic activity. Patient doesn't get post-operative pain, so he keeps on walking. And that will destroy the foot. Same thing happens if patient, uh, classically charco occurs only in neuropathy. But if you have a patient who has been revascularized and sudden increase in the blood flow and he has a small wound which starts healing and he starts walking, it will again trigger. So these are the things of clinical importance which you need to keep in mind that it may be a small surgery, but keep the patient's activity at a low level for at least one or two weeks. So this can be avoided. One of the modalities which can help in detecting midfoot pressure is a foot scan. So diagnosing Charcot uh, foot early with clinical examination and aggressive conservative treatment can prevent the uh, amputations. And you, you need to see that. Now, the acute charco uh, is because of these things. As I told you, denervation, trauma, identifiable or unidentifiable, repeated stress, and in, intact vasculature. 
and these are few factors which stimulates the rankel pathway which uh, you know makes it uh, the uncontrolled inflammation and these are the factors many of them uh, except increased gl glucose we don't have real control on that but if you stabilize the foot and reduce the activity i think you can manage most of the time to save the foot this is classically described as four etiological factors sensory motor neuropathy autonomic neuropathy then many patients have nephropathy as a contributing and a minor trauma which can be surgical trauma and this is how the whole cycle starts neuropathy which causes ligament injury uh, painless ambulation joint destruction ulceration infection if it is ulceration infection you have to treat it like that but it is many times only acute charco a leg which is swollen warm and the difference with the temperature difference between the affected leg and contralateral leg is more than 2 degrees uh, it is a pathognomic sign that it is a charco and in acute charco if there is ulcer you have to treat it like any ulcer but otherwise you have to give a total contact cast and that is a gold standard total contact cast for conservative treatment and if you keep on giving cast till the temperature becomes equal or you get some radiological osteoblastic evidence most of the charco will fuse conservatively even the wounds if there are there will heal provided you are patient usually it takes about 3 to 6 months many american podiatry institutes give for 18 months and they give crow walkers immobilize the patient or limited mobility cast can be removable cast or you know permanent cast in the sense non removable cast removable cast are uh, easy to give but they are in a way risky because patient just removes it whenever he wants and that creates a problem uh, so i believe that in indian setting giving a full cast which can be changed every 3 to 4 weeks is a easier solution than giving uh, removable cast for a mid foot and a four foot charco you can give a walking cast where you can incorporate a acrylic outsole while for hind foot charco you need to give a non walking cast so we must remember why charco is missed with a simple thing what your mind knows i see i think unless we have some suspicion and we are sure that you know there can be something like charco uh, we are likely to miss it completely so i think we must be aware that 7.5% of 70 million is a large number which in those patients amputation can be completely prevented if we just you know see that a unilateral edema of the foot and just do a basic x-ray and clinical examination you can probably diagnose that foot which is going under collapse so this is a dictum unilateral foot edema and warmth in a diabetic patient is a strong predictor of charco foot imaging study as i said radiographically you can see many things i'll just show ct scan also shows many times changes in a bone structure mri one of the earliest signs in mri is a bone edema marrow edema if marrow edema is there uh, and you you have a clinical uh, suspicion i think it's most likely i would say 90 out of 100 times it is early charco because bone edema will not occur unless there is some uh, other uh, pathology which of course you have ruled out clinically and by taking history so in a diabetic patient when there is no wound unilateral swelling and if you can manage to get do an mri and which shows a marrow edema that's a sure sign of charco bone scan can be very uh, you know useful in a early stage where it shows pick up in all three phases in the tarsal bones then that can confirm uh, your diagnosis but when we are again i would like to repeat when we are talking about a millions of patient bone scan is available in a very very few centers and cost is also important factor so you have to judge on your, uh, rely on your clinical judgment weight bearing x rays are very important to find out whether there is a mobility again problem is 
most of the hospitals don't have facility for weight bearing x-ray it's not that it is a some rocket science it's a very simple adjustment of the machine so if you do a weight bearing x-ray you can see the mobility of the foot and that gives you idea uh, whether this charco will fuse or will require surgical treatment and these are some of the effects of fused charco uh, which are either fused with your co contact cast or as i said naturally they fuse with a deformity so these are still walkable feet but they have fused in a wrong position and feet like this of course will require correction but once the foot uh, the charco fuses even with a deformity whether you will uh, go in for surgery or not the basic issue is that you have to decide whether that foot which is fused with some minor deformity is what they call shoeable whether you can prepare a footwear and comfortably manage that then probably you can don't need to intervene otherwise a deformity like this will require correction these are variety of things which you see in a charco this well in a leprosy uh, foot like this remember leprosy also causes charco but the foot shrinks like this leprosy has no metabolic component so the foot will shrink completely and there won't be any mobility usually so this causes a resorption of the bones completely but still walkable if such patient gets diabetes of course he lands up in a major problem bisphosphonates are very important because they reduce the initial destructive phase time it can reduce the destructive phase time and that can help in healing and bisphosphonates one of the commonest uses is zolendronic acid which has to be given 4 mg uh, you have to do uh, renal profile and uh, then adjust the dose uh, it has to be given at least once there is a study done in pgi where they have shown that it can be given after 6 months and you can uh, you know uh, heal the charco faster uh, bisphosphonate mechanism is that it works at tissue level cellular level and this is how it causes apoptosis of the osteoclast and reduces the initial phase of a destruction these are some new drugs which are not still available in india uh, for a conservative treatment as i said contact cast is a cornerstone and this is one of the ways to give contact cast there are many ways of giving contact cast there are newer and newer cast materials newer and newer technology is available but simple cast can be given in a prone position by protecting all the pressure points you put a stock in stock in it separate the toes and give first a posterior slab and you have to incorporate as i said a So in uh, outsole in that and then it is a walking cast so walking cast are very important because you can mobilize the patient but it doesn't mean travel in buses and auto rickshaws and all it is for mobility inside the house these are the indications of surgical treatment i won't go into that because dr arvind is going to talk what is the indian scenario we don't have a uh, you know weight bearing x ray in almost all the places lack of team approach most of the time patient either is with a physician or orthopedic surgeon both would not communicate with each other and some third person will do below knee amputation lack of graduate and post graduate curriculum inputs which are not there at all i don't think any orthopedic post graduate curriculum has a anything related in detail about charco poor orthotic support in most of the places and amputation is common what we need to do is that we have to have a strong team of at least an orthopedic surgeon and a physician to tackle this you have to have a good orthotic support improved curriculum input orthotics and physiotherapy should be part of a team and development of a teaching material in the form of videos uh, for a post graduate student and these are the take home message amputation should be the last resource in charco because as we have been saying since yesterday that amputation if you do that patient is a going to be in a problem and mobile deformity which cannot be uh, managed with a contact cast should always be fixed 
because we see many patients with a mobile charco walking with a afo or crow walker uh, in a indian scenario that sort of a thing doesn't work if they travel in uh, metros and uh, local trains that is going to cause injuries and rocker bottom charco deformity can be easily corrected by most of the surgeons it, i need not be an orthopedic surgeon because many time mid foot collapse you can correct it and do tendo achilles lengthening and you have salvaged the foot thank you thank you sir for a very elaborate presentation on on diagnosing early charco and what is the importance of the, uh, diagnosing and managing these and probably as i read uh, years by as i listen to professor bar the five key things that he keeps telling about the charco is basic clinical examination and just a plain x ray you don't need anything costlier to diagnose a charco a unilaterally warm red swollen foot unless otherwise proved which is to more than 2 degree temperature difference with the opposite limb is a charco foot treated treated like a charco foot and tcc is the gold standard for managing the acute charco foot i think uh, uh, invite any questions from the audience the first exercise we should advise to a diabetic patient with foot deformity see uh, normally uh, the protocol is that if the patient has a insensate foot deformed foot existing ulcer or uh, history of ulcer you should not give him a exercise which is a weight bearing or walking or a brisk walking it has to be upper body exercise or swimming provided his cardiological condition is okay or is there he has a facilities for swimming otherwise upper body exercise is one of the best exercises because if you make him walk for 45 minutes at a brisk pace he is heading for a problem is cycling safe option cycling will be safe at a stationary cycle okay. yeah thank you thank you sir any more qu questions for professor bal thank you very much sir i would like to